And today on the call we have Tom and Linda and John and Fiona. We're going to talk about some excellent ways we use puppets in our life and with our families with education. And I'm going to share with you in a bit, after we all have our little say, what uh, my conversation was with Sean Adams yesterday. Okay? So, um, Tom, I understand you shared a really cute little flat koala bear. Could you share your how that works with... So th this, is, this is just a bear. This is one of... Uh, we were given this for our little warrior. It's just a, um, looks like a regular teddy, but it's actually, but it's flat. actually flat. Ah. Uh -huh. So, no, um, no. it's just a nice it's lamb. Not, it's not a puppet, but it's, uh, the closest it's thing I have to a puppet. That's cute. And I bet you don't have No, you can't. Oh, yeah, because it's flat. So, Tom, well, while we're talking with you, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with your wonderful program. Um, so I'm from the New Parenting Hangout.com. We uh, educate parents on all things to do with pregnancy, birth, and beyond. Um, and it's very, very relevant for us. The warrior is now uh, three and a half months old. So we're right in the thick of things. That's exciting. Super exciting. Okay, Linda, would you like to share some things you've been doing with your puppets and how you've been helping and whatnot? Well, all of these behind me, except for the horse, were stuffed animals. We did uh, the gingerbread man story with a group of little ladies. We had a lot of fun. Um, we did... Uh, this is the story of the gingerbread man. He ran away from the little old woman, the little old man, and all of these animals and some more animals, too. We had a lot of fun. and I've been converting stuffed animals into puppets, quite a few. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank and you. Fun. Yeah, fun. And, and all uh, kids of all ages seem to like him. <laughs> They're old or young. Is Jonathan still there? His face is there. Fiona, let's go to you then. Fiona, how hi, we'd love you to share a little bit about what you're doing. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Can you just mute out again? Can you the feedback? Because I think the feedback's Mute me? No? Okay. Is, are you there, Jonathan? Yes. Would you uh, like to share a little bit about what you're doing and then uh, in the past, we've talked about how doing puppets and stories and that with your family can make really lasting memories. So first, we'd love to hear about what you're doing, Fiona. And uh, before I say that, Tom and Fiona are from Australia and are in Australia now, so you might be able to mention that too. And, and 
You're welcome. And some of your children, haven't they gone into the medical profession too? Don't you have some that are? Yeah. Ah, oh, good. Uh, I have a son that's uh, a pathologist too. And uh, it's amazing how you can use puppets to help people when they don't feel well, help them with emotions, because puppets help us through crises many times. And so that's something that um, I'm going to share with you. I, I, I guess we've lost Jonathan, have we? He's not here? OK. I'm here. Oh, OK, Jonathan. Um, could you please share a little bit about what you do? You you do a lot of video recording. I know you work with a group called uh, Life, and uh, share something, and and then maybe a little take on your view of puppets. I know you've played with your children with puppets, so we'd love to hear from you, Jonathan. Are you still there? Hmm. Okay, I think he's back. Or not. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, did you hear what I asked? Could you share a little bit about yourself, please? We're, we're glad to see your smiling face. Well, in the meantime, um, while we're getting him back on track. I, I had an opportunity to speak with Sean Adams this week. Have you had your opportunities to any of you to speak with Sean? Oh, we lost Jonathan. Um, have you had a chance to speak with Sean, Tom? I haven't spoken with Sean or I've emailed Sean, but I'm not um, I'm not doing the challenge this time. I'm just here to support okay. you today. I love that, and I obviously needed a lot of support with the tech things, so I, I really want to work with you on technical things, too. So I appreciate that, and, and I'm going to share with you. Fiona, did you have an opportunity to work with Sean this week yet? You're muted. Um, how has he, have you got anything you'd like to share with us, something that that um, might be insightful for us? Great. I kind of wanted to introduce that so that I could, as a segue to tell you about the conversation that I had with, with Sean yesterday. Um, we spoke and he, you know, we're Mom's Kids Plus Puppets. He wants me to expand that to actually work with teachers in schools and in education to work with kindergarten and especially the primary grades. Well, today I actually taught high school, and earlier in the week I taught the intermediate school, and, and they all like puppets too, but when I work with them with my puppets, I do it on a different, on a different level. And so, um, 
Um, I thought today, while, we're, while we take a few minutes while we're together, we could brainstorm about some things that you think would be a good approach to working with teachers in schools. And maybe someday I can come down to Australia and work with you all, too, and your, your things. But he, he feels that I need to expand beyond parents and, and to, get, to get the professional take on it to actually work with people that are professionally working with children. And he said that I should Facebook things and, and, and ask for educators who would like to educate in a creative way. And so that's sort of what I wanted to brainstorm with you all on today. And um, that's what he thought I needed to do. He said that the URL and everything still works, because I'm obviously going to be working with parents and moms and everything. But he thought to get it a little more professional, it would be good to work with the schools. He said to start working with the schools close. So I just wanted to get a feeling now. When I talked to Alex, he call, Alex called me uh, a teacher tainer, which is a teacher entertainer. So he called me a teacher tainer and thought that I should label myself as that. So we can do that. So um, with those new thoughts in mind, I would love to hear any thoughts that you had that you think would be particularly good to move it forward in that direction, because it's a little different direction than what I was going. Not too far, because I do teach. I work in the schools, but it seems like I work in the schools with a lot of high school students. Do you want to go it? Great. Excellent. In fact, Marlene, okay, go ahead, Tom. I was just going to say, did you want to know how to get into the schools? Is that what you're aiming at? Or you yeah, because yeah, if I'm going to introduce myself, I'm actually going to need some, you know, some verbiage to say I have, and Linda, between us, we have way over 300 puppets now. Mm -hmm. um, I personally have over 300 puppets. Linda, as you can see, has got quite a stack of them back there. So, um, so yeah, if you've got some thoughts on that. And, and um, for your interest, and Linda, um, if you want to say something, wave, wave your hand, and then we'll, we'll unmute you. Um, so today, I actually taught high school. And the first hour that I taught was President Obama. Well, it's the Obamas are doing the bullying program to stop the bullying. And so that's really amazing, Fiona, that you brought it up first off, because we spent the whole first hour that I was teaching today working on bullying. And actually, they didn't really have a lot of super duper ideas to combat it. So I think that Fiona is right on the target. They more talked about it. and. And then the question was asked, should you say mean words to other people? And that was one of the main questions that they asked the students they were working with. So. Excellent. That's good. But have you have you already got contacts 
within the school system itself where you're trying to target or you're trying to target? Well, we like just had this conversation yesterday and I personally, locally, go to the schools to help out and I've done a lot of programs and tomorrow Linda and I are going to the Fine Arts Center because they have a program there. Um, they're doing a puppet program and, and I'm a member of the Utah Puppetry and Linda's going to join tomorrow. Yes. So uh, I've been a member of that for a substantial amount of time, done many programs. But I haven't specifically uh, gone to the schools really. I did, I did go to the schools with my Turn It Around Compliment Bound program, which is putting people up instead of down but not with the Moms, Kids Plus Puppets theme. Not with that theme. And, I, and we don't need to call it Moms, Kids Plus Puppets. We can call have a, the, the show another name. And bullying is a big issue. When I was in high school last year, I was talking to a group of students, and I said, I said, I guess bullying's not a problem here, is it? <laughs> and then I go in the classroom, there was dead silence total silence and so I said oh I guess there is a problem of bullying here so yeah there, there is a there's a big a big issue of bullying say that again about the program I didn't catch the first words, it, it, it gargled. Oh, a DVD? Uh-huh. Linda, would you like to add something? Do you want to unmute her? Can you, can you unmute her for a second? Oh, okay. She, she's, okay, she doesn't want to talk right now. Okay. Okay. Um. I can unmute, but you guys said all I do is make noise, so why is well, there... You're not making noise right now. You're echoing. You're okay right now. Oh, well, um, I, don't, I don't know what you want me to say now. I, <coughs> I've watched some various things lately that um, cell phones are cutting off people's... Um, little kids shouldn't even have them. Um, be allowed because they are using text messaging and stuff to bully other kids, saying rude things and horrible, mean things to them. Um, because there's no eye contact, they hurt a child and it has no impact back to them. Kids not have cell phones. It's just an evil way to be able to take in and hurt. That's an excuse me for the first um, second. A way to and, and hurt another child but not have any impact back on them. They don't get to see their face and the hurt that they give this child, you know. And and there's a lot of cyberbullying too because they don't really see them, you know. They 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 send text well between emails and text messaging and all this. I'm I'm messing it up, but anyway, it's it's like there's no personal contact, but they see them at school, they hurt them, and it makes them feel better, I, don't, I guess. I don't know if the bully feels better when they've hurt somebody. I don't have that kind of a personality to want to really hurt someone, but there was um, another, um, um, I don't, it was a okay. thingy that I watched earlier that was, um, really good too that um, 
it was targeting um, like the teenagers and um, that there's so many of them that are, are feeling that um, horrible feeling inside from being bullied so much and they're cut off from all their friends. Nobody wants to have anything to do with them and they start cutting themselves to release that anger and such and it's it's like they get further and further um, inside themselves and angry but they can't do anything about it so they end up committing suicide. It's really a horrible thing. And I'll just say something that um, this week Google has actually launched uh, what they're doing with YouTube because there was a big problem with comments on YouTube that you could basically be anonymous um, and, and not have your profile picture up against your name. And YouTube's now rolling out Google Plus comments underneath YouTube videos, so you have to have your name and it's attached to your profile now um, when you comment. That, that's in the process of rolling out. And it will stop a lot of the cyberbullying on YouTube that goes on because um, you can, you'll be able to personalize your comments. So, like in Google Plus, where you can share to one person or to the whole, to everyone, so you can customize whoever you share it with. You'll be able to do exactly the same thing with your comments on YouTube. So, if you see a video and you want to comment, and and I'm just going to use something like, say, circumcision for example, it's a pretty hot topic. It one way or the other. You might not want everyone to know your views on that, and you can still post on the videos so the person that created the content um, can see that, and you can share it with your circles so they see your views on it. Um, so it's going to eliminate some cyberbullying, which I think is quite good. But it's a big problem across the world, um, and I think the internet, um, text messages, um, everything does enhance that. And as you said, there's no accountability and responsibility because there's no eye contact made majority of the time. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think it's a very valid point. I think that uh, puppets can definitely help uh, spread that message um, and help, uh, I guess, rectify it and maybe just educate and inform kids that it's not not right to do this. It's not just kids that do it, unfortunately. You're right. You're right. It's great to see you, Ricardo. How are you doing? Can you talk? Can you talk, Ricardo? Yeah, talk yeah. to us. Yeah, now you're listening? Okay. It's a yeah. very complicated period because, uh, you know, <laughs> look at there. Oh, your mother <laughs> passed away, too. All the boxes because I have to go out of my office and then uh, a lot of things happen, so... Uh, I'm going to uh, to do a reprise uh, with the internet uh, just in these uh, days. Just let me um, just let me go out of my office and uh, then uh, find another one so I can uh, connect uh, with the uh, with you and the other again. Yeah, we need to continue on with our challenge we want to do with you. Yeah, and. Um, you weren't on the conversation, but I wanted to tell you really quickly, when I had my talk with Sean this week, he wants me to really work with the schools and uh, from kindergarten to third grade primarily. I can do the older ones too, but he wants me to really emphasize working with them. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going to want to make some movies and some videos and DVDs and things to do that. Yeah. This is so wonderful to be talking to people around the the world, to have you from Italy and Australia and in the United States. <coughs> Excuse me. It's so good to see you. And we know you've been through a lot with the passing of your mom. So yeah. we wish you the well. Yeah, well yeah. We've been talking about bullying. So one of the things we want to work with is for one about of the things. About bullying? Bullying. Bullying. <coughs> so that's one of the things because we were talking about cyberbullying and bullying in schools and bullying on the cell phones. So, so if you have any thoughts you'd like to share with us, we oh. would. <laughs> well, <coughs> I have just connected uh, to listen uh, to.
to listen up uh, the new the, the news from uh, you. Uh, so. so okay, so the news is that uh, we want to do some work on bullying, and for us, we want to, of course, continue to contact with the parents and the moms, but we also want to expand and, and see if we can reach teachers. Alex called uh, what we're doing teacher painting. So we're being entertaining and we're teaching at the same time. So we kind of want to work with that theme. Okay, okay. What kind of, of school? Well, that's what he suggested that we do from kindergarten to third grade first. First. Because you can't do it all at the same time. So approach the, the younger students first. And then as we, I have a lot of success. And most of my success, the, and, and uh, you missed earlier, I said I taught, uh, I've been teaching the higher grades this week. And I have a lot of success with that. So I, I definitely want to add that in, but but he thinks that it would be better to start with the younger grades and then as we get that set up, then move into the older grades. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's where we'll want to come in with flashy videos that we can give the teachers and, and Fiona had a great idea about making sure you have a, a nice DVD because that you can use, uh, bullying's a worldwide problem. And and so with that we can we are universal. I mean we are. You're from Italy. Tom and Fiona are from are right. from Australia. That there's a problem. How much problem is there with bullying in Australia, Tom? In the schools and that. Um, the problems of different segments of society, or how basically uh, is it fat and thin, or how does it mostly work? I think it's across the board. Um, I think a lot of, and it's difficult, I've been out of the school system for a while and probably not 100% connected with it, but from my experience I think it's just uh, people just, um, I don't think it's anything in particular that, that gets bullied about, I think I don't think there's any topics that are kind of off, off the, off the uh, table so to speak. Um, and so everything's fair game. Yeah, yeah, everything's fair game. It's just uh, well, unfair game. What I'd like to call it. Um, unfair game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's quite sad that that it does happen. I just think that there's a lot of driving forces behind it. Now, maybe that the kids bullied at home or unhappy at home or just egged on. And I think that it uh, becomes a bit of a mob mentality or a crowd mentality sometimes, where people decide that they that someone's not doesn't fit in with how that they're fitting in and they choose that they're going to isolate them somehow and I think it's really sad. Um, but that's only generally speaking. But I'm just trying to think back. But that's that's not only in... Um, unfortunately, I don't think it's only in schools. I, I, I think that happens in real life um, with um, teenagers and with adults as well. That, um, people get to a point that they feel like they're so isolated that they don't go out because they think that they're going to get picked on or they don't and, and then it then it comes down to their confidence or, or lack of confidence or, or self-esteem actually feeds the bullies as well to work against them and so it's kind of a vicious circle um, how I look at it. Um, yeah. I hope that's a bit of an insight. Yeah. So uh, if you are going to uh, approach the schools, and which you may do at some point, um, what do you think is a good, a good way to, to tackle that? I need to think on that this week. Yeah, so that's what I was asking you just before. Have you already got a contact within the schools that you're working at that, that you could expand what you're doing in the schools? That, I, I assume are you working in one or, or many schools at the moment? Yeah, in the in the county. Mm -hmm. In the county, so I would um, for you, I would start off there, and um, for you, I'm assuming that the U.S. system is quite standard across a state. Uh, I don't know if it's standard across it, the the whole country, um, but maybe you can get if you get 
some sort of leverage or traction with, with working within your county, they might expand it to the state for you and then um, it's about being able to leverage what you're doing um, would be the best thing. To get access to schools and teachers, um, I don't know, one of the places that you could do something would be a school fete or fair or whatever you call those. And like carnival or a fair. Carnival, yeah, whatever you guys have. What do we call them here? Fates. Uh, fates. Or even kindergarten. Like I'm assuming you're going to target kindergartens and things like that as well. Um, I would have thought it would be quite easy to be able to get a guest spot just to amuse the kids for half an hour. Um, you could deliver a message at the same time um, in, a, in a short period of time um, and you could see lots of kids that way um, and get a message across but um, still keeping it quite light um, overall but um, I still think you could get a message across quite easily to kindergartens because they're going to, I would think that they would be very happy to have someone come in and, and show a little bit of fun and, and uh, I mean, kids love pup kids love puppets, so it's a, a nice distraction for them. Um, and you can use it to teach at the same time. Yeah, because right, uh, in this country, and I assume you have it in Australia, but they have core curriculum. And so if you know what the core curriculum is and what they're working on, whether it's friendship or respect or or language skills or whatever, then then that segues really well. Mm -hmm. So Linda, you've worked in the Head Start program. Have you got some thoughts of any teachers or anything that we could, do you still have any contacts with any teachers from when your kids went to school that we could talk to or at church or anything that we could start working with? Marlene, that was in Idaho. I don't have any contacts in Utah. Okay, well, then we'll okay. Then we'll work on that. Okay. All right. I thought you you might still know some teachers. Do you have any teachers at church or anything that you know of in your work? Yeah, well, you probably do too, don't you? Yeah, and actually, I've I, that's a good place to start. I think I'll talk to some of them. Yeah, I think I'll interview them. I think that's a good thing to do. It's a great idea. Are you, are you still there, Fiona, or are you, I see your pretty face there. Um, have you got something you would like to add at all? Um, when do you think you'll be back on target again, Ricardo? I know you're working on your, on your office and everything. Yeah. Um. Uh, can you repeat? I I misunderstood. I, you know, I I just said. Uh, wh when do you think you'll be back on target with your office and everything? Uh, I know you're working it's, on it. It's a very just good uh, question because uh, um, I I'm going to leave within uh, three or four days, and then uh, um, I'm I, uh, I I am waiting for the connection, the internet the connection to the to to my to my house. Because uh, uh, I will I will be temporarily in my house to to do my work and just in the just uh, waiting for another accommodation for my office. So I have to wait for the connection I said uh, to the to the internet provider that I want uh, the new connection at uh, 14 or 15 of October. Okay, so, that gives us a, a date to work with. So we'll see what we can come up with with scripts and stuff. So if, you, if any of you have ideas for a little script or something, we can prepare the video or whatever. Of course, Tom, anything we do, you'll be able to use in your programs as, as works with you, and we'll take suggestions because we've got so many puppets that if you have a suggestion for a story, same with you, Ricardo, if you have any suggestions, for stories or anything that you think would would work. Uh, we do original things too, obviously. That's very helpful to do original things. And um, that's kind of where we're heading right now. We, 
I guess bullying is the theme, and we want to work with the schools. So, Tom, what else would you like to add before we wrap up here? I think you're doing an amazing job. That's one of the things that uh, I think this would be very valuable for uh, many, many parents and teachers and, and, uh, and children as well. I think it's a, a noble cause. So what I would like to say is what I would like us to do is to move our society forward in a positive way as possible so that we <laughs> so that we can be kinder to each other. Respect to me is a really big issue and be respectful whether somebody's has an accent or, or we love Ricardo's accent. <laughs> um, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> or, or whether we have different colored skin, whether we live on a different continent, um, we can we can gain from our our life experiences and have fun. So we, I think, we'll kind of work, not kind of, but I think we'll we'll hit on bullying and want to come up with some nice material in the bullying area. I think that's a really good. A good place to start. I know when I work with the younger kids, a lot of times the teachers want me to do a friendship. Um, okay. Have you got, Marlene? Have you got a question? Have you got a, a list of the types of puppets that you have? I've had, uh, at least on the other computer, I've had um, an inventory of them, and I I need to update it. Yeah. And we're going to a puppet fair tomorrow, and the lady who was a puppet maker and that used to own the puppetarium is selling her business, and she's going to have some puppets there tomorrow too. So, I'm going to want to look at uh, what she's doing, and and because she's an older lady, so she's had a long life of working making puppets. So it's going to be interesting. So, I do. I need to update my Okay. My inventory list. When you have updated, uh, just give it to me so I can uh, do some kind of uh, brainstorming for uh, the scripts, for example, based okay. on, on the kind of uh, puppets the, that you have. We have lots of wide mouth puppets. We have lots of people. You see all the puppets in the back row. Linda, can you show them your... They were once stuffed puppets, I mean stuffed animals that she's turned into puppets. Linda, could you introduce them to Ricardo for a minute? And the alligator, or oh, the rabbit. Okay. Oh, right. <laughs> you can unmute yourself if you want. We just had an echo, so we were trying to mute people. This, that is darling. This stuff I took and cut him open. At the back. Okay. He had a really cute little mouth that I decided, well, he would be very easy to, to use. So he was a lot of fun. He was um, actually in a, a um, second-hand store. It was, I think I paid $1.50 for him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this is a the singing in the rain mechanical dog and I took his guts out <laughs> and he already had Got free. <laughs> yeah. I took the, the it was a big plastic thingy that had batteries in it and I took and made him into just a cute I'm little singing I, in the rain. Just singing in the rain. The thing with him is he doesn't have fur all the way up. He just has some fuzzy um, cloth here. So he's pretty much a, either needs a jacket or or this raincoat on. But he because he's he's also got his rain oh, shoes on boots. But he he moves really, really well. He is really good to move. I was very really pleased with him. He's just a lot of fun because he can wave all over the place. That's but I've done a whole lot of, of uh, stuffed animals made them into puppets. Um, there's a here's a, another another rabbit. 
he doesn't have a, a moving mouth, but he has, I can make his head nod and make his hands wave. He's the same. I opened up his bottom and isn't that terrible that I do that to these poor things? But anyway, it, it's been a lot of fun. It really is an easy thing if you get the right kind of stuffed animal. I found the ones that are setting ones, um, like he he was a, this this chicken is a stuffed animal, and I. I took and I opened up the bottom. I stuck a lining in him too because he needed to stay fat, but uh, or she did. But um, <laughs> he's, he's a lot of fun too. She can she can have a lot of expression without even opening her mouth. You know. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you're right. Anyway. Um, and I to practice my animal sounds that we all yeah. need to, you know. <laughs> anyway, there's a mo most of mine are ones that um, I did find um, one day when I was in. Um, I found somebody had taken and given away a bunch of little, little fun little puppets that are the glove puppets, and and I was able to pick them up for really inexpensive. And uh, I was really tickled with them. Um, in fact, my grandkids played with these yesterday, no, two days ago. And uh, I babysat my little one-year-old granddaughter and played peekaboo around the corner with her. And she just let out such squeals of delight and uh, what thought it was just hilarious for me to poke one of these around the corner. She had a blast, and then pretty soon she wanted to stick her hands up, and I was to stick puppets on her hands so she could she could wave them around she doesn't she doesn't have hands big enough to do anything but just stick them straight on but she had a blast and I did too and she's just but, barely a year old she's a year old yeah. in July so she's only 13 months old so I was just luck sometimes I when I've when I've gone into the second hand stores and stuff it's like I found I found him too He's just a cute little alligator, and uh, the kids like him He's a lot. He's not going to bite anybody. <laughs> no, but I, I showed the other alligator that was a mechanical one that I I had to beat him with a hammer. I was really mean. But <laughs> I had to just beat him, beat, beat him to break all the plastic stuff up, and then I took a saw and, and sawed off various parts to be able to get it out because otherwise I couldn't use him and stick my hand in his mouth and make his mouth work but I had to saw off the, the part that I guess when he had batteries and everything he must have opened his mouth every so often and made his tail wiggle but uh, his tail's disconnected but it's there and he, and he is just really cute um, he had um, I think he had a motion sensor right in here between his eyes. I had to hot glue his eyes down a little bit better. Um, gosh, I've got, I mean, I've been busy, really busy with a lot of stuffed animals. Um, I don't have my other, I guess, I've got, I found another, um, sometimes you can find ones that are actually even like, um, pajama bags that are really, really cute and uh, turn them into a puppet because they have all the room in the inside and have their head. They have one that's a teddy bear and he's in the other room and um, I think I have an, oh, I have another one that was, I don't know if he was a purse or what it was, but he's really, really cute that I took and, and re, um, I took out a zipper and different things on him and made him into a puppet. This one's another stuffed animal that's an elephant. Uh, my grandsons really thought he was fun. He's like, um, we have quite a number of elements, elephants, and we all used to sing this song in uh, Head Start of uh, one elephant went out to play on a rainy, cl cloudy, rainy day. He had such enormous fun. He asked another elephant to come. And then we just used the kids. Hey, Tom, as you got that one? 
we didn't we didn't have uh, elephant like, puppets. No. We didn't have elephant puppets to use. We just you have to write a call with your song. But um, you can always, if you have more elephants, have a group of kids play with them. It's always fun. So whatever kind of day it is, you just say, uh, on a bright and sunny day or on a blustery, wintry day or windy day. And uh, it's oh, there's a mouse. much more to come. Yeah, yeah he kind of looks like that, doesn't he? His feet move so good. Anyway, it's been fun. Yeah, so those are some of the fun things. And so even when we work with the teachers, if they have an art activity, you know, we can do make some simple puppets. That's what we were doing in our original challenge. And um, but really, teachers need if they've been teaching a long time, they need some creative ideas. Because sometimes the teachers get tired of the kids' antics, and so it's good to pull out some original material. And and then, like you said, Tom, make it fun, too, for them. School. Kids spend a lot of time in school. A lot of time. Kids can express themselves uh, easier through a puppet than they can themselves. If they're having problems at home or with other children, they can have the puppet actually to tell what's going on rather than if they can't tell themselves the puppet can say that they that they're being hurt and um, sometimes that's a good way to get what this kid is feeling going through because some of them just can't tell you yeah that's right and and Fiona was saying that earlier too that with the puppet she could have the puppet crying and pouring out its heart and soul, but if it was her doing it, she said she wouldn't be doing it, but she could do it through a puppet, and many other children can do that too. So I think it's a valuable tool. So um, before we wrap up, has anybody got any final words? Hey, Fiona, are you back with us? Your beautiful face is still there. Uh, you got anything you'd like to add, Tom? from Australia, <laughs> who has a beautiful three-month-old baby who is going to enjoy some of these fun things we create. Yes, 100%. Um, no, I just think, I think you're on the right path. I mean, just uh, it's going to start off start off small and refine what you're doing, and, and then um, I think you'll be able to make some really good DVDs and, and, um, and be able to spread your message on a global scale. Um, but I love all the puppets, and like, I never even thought about going to a second-hand shop and uh, grabbing a couple of uh, stuffed toys and turning them into puppets. But um, you've got some super cute puppets there, Linda. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that you do as well, Marlene. It's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's eye-opening, and I think it, it, you can deliver a really good message at the same time, which is great. And I and, and just to add to what you said, because so many times when I'm teaching and working with the children, they go we can't afford puppets and they mm -hmm. go you can actually if you can take a puppet model or a sock you can turn it into something that's really fun and it doesn't cost you a ton of money if you can do that with a little creativity mm -hmm. yeah, agree. Oh, Ricardo what would you yeah. like to add yeah, I, I definitely love the crocodiles puppets. <laughs> 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 and um, I, I, I want to ask you, um, have you thought to, to make workshops uh, with the teachers and the children to, uh, to make them learn uh, how, to do, how to develop ideas for puppets or how to make puppets and so on? Yeah, that's actually one of the things that Alex Mendoza and Sean said that that is one of our next steps we should do is the workshops, and I think that's an excellent thing. So, and that that again is figuring out a way to connect with who wants to do it, and maybe we could make some connections tomorrow, Linda, because we're going to be at that 
meeting and there will be some people and there probably will be some educators there so that may be a great place to start and I've done I've done workshops in the past with people I've done many workshops in the past just not lately because of some of the circumstances in my life but my life is evolving again just as yours is Ricardo yeah yeah <laughs> so Linda um, what final thoughts would you like to share with us some maybe some things that you were inspired with tonight some goals that you may have set or or whatever that you'd like to share before we sign off you always put me on the spot I don't know <laughs> right now um, I just am always um, at trying to think of various animals that I don't have or whatever that might have a um, a good meaning. It's like um, when Marlene and I were off um, here a week or so ago, um, I had a little, a cute little book that it was, um, oh, kangaroos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Blessings from Above and the lady who wrote the book was a mother who was never able to have any children and she wrote the book, a book about a little um, kangaroo and uh, she had an empty pouch and she wanted to have a baby and she saw all the different little animals that had had babies and she wanted a baby too you know she saw animals that had had a baby she wanted to have a baby too and so um, one day she happened to be below a, a tree and uh, there was baby bluebirds that were hatching and uh, the mother bluebird had too many eggs in the nest and uh, she took and um, was watching when one of them had just been hatched. Another one stretched its wings and down fell one of the baby bluebirds, but the mama kangaroo was right below and the baby bluebird fell right into the little pouch of the mama kangaroo and uh, the mother bird was knew that she couldn't she couldn't retrieve her baby and she was happy that the mama kangaroo had the baby and uh, they ended up being the like mom and mom and, and baby and it was just a cute little story we kind of did film that it was fun yeah, these well, are uh, stuffed animals too that I opened up the kitties so you can see there's a, a wide variety of, of, of things and I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea, Ricardo. And I have 300 uh, and uh, the wide mouth puppets. Uh, you may have seen some of them before. Uh, Fiona, are you are you with us? Or if not, um, we certainly appreciate all your love and support and your ideas on bullying today. And it's a great thing to work on. So with that in mind, uh, my goal is to work on the bullying issue, to come up with some scripts, to continue with our puppet making and sharing. I like your idea about the workshops and have ideas to have to connect with the teachers. So, so if you have any, even any verbiage that's uh, that would be good, Tom, or that you might think of, you can let me know. And and I really appreciate your love and support and especially your technology <laughs> you saved me so many times technological I'm learning and as we all are and I'm, I'm very very grateful to you I'm looking forward to what we're going to create in the future Ricardo Fiona if you can hear this I am so grateful for your genealogy program that you have and for the memories that you're creating for families because that's what we're about we're about the we're about making memories for families forever because really that's that's what we have is the people that we love and that we connect with Linda I'm grateful for you for your ability and the fun we have when we raid the secondhand stores to find <laughs> stuffed animals that people have discarded and to turn them into something that is going to be a lot of fun for a lot of young people and educators so may we all be teacher-tainers in our own way. 
And uh, with that, I would like to close off, and we will meet again approximately in a week. And keep me posted of when you're going to have your sessions. That's a bit daffy, isn't it? <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> That's all, folks. So. <laughs> I love you all and look forward to helping build this community world we have into a marvelous place. Thank yeah. you for coming from Italy and Australia and the United States. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See you.